speak, we have to have open mind uh, to uh, pass our prejudice, uh, not to be disappointed so much, not to bring into the topic our frustrations, be a really open mind person and give chance to everybody to say what is their point of view. materials uh, to, to speak on this conference, I start with the first sentence and it's full-fledged utilization. Full-fledged utilization of women uh, in a matter of uh, peace in the world. Why we are speaking about this? Uh, very often when I'm speaking with my students, with people who, who, who want to, to listen to me, I'm saying uh, women are source of this world. Uh, we are resource in the world. Having gas in percentage of 49, uh, we have to think that one part of population must not be forgotten, must not be put it aside, and not giving a chance uh, to that part of uh, population uh, to be free from obligations from a situation, dealing with situation that happened in this world. Speaking about women, we are speaking about a part of population that is first one who are uh, guaranteed security to human being. Devil delivering babies, we are first one who are providing security to, to, to new human beings. And, uh, Passing that obligation to the man, it's not so easy. Not easy for us, and it's not something what we have to do. So, speaking about uh, security, we are speaking about obligation that is not possible to divide between women and men. It will be so easy that we have so many men that they are able to provide that security in situation when we have a lack of men in this world, we have to be very aware how much we have to be involved in that issue. Speaking about women uh, taking care about security of human beings, we are speaking about women rights, but more of that we are speaking about human rights. Why somebody to stop me to do something if I'm thinking that I'm able to do that on, on a very good way? Look at this, 4,000 years, it's not a mistake, it's not 400, 4,000 years women are uh, involved in wars. We are speaking about 17th century before Christ, when the pharaoh, female pharaoh, uh, Ahotep took the position of her husband who was killed during the war situation. At that time she had two under the age sons. She took that position. She fought the wars. She won wars. And now after 4,000 years somebody is putting question if we are able to be uh, warriors, to be leaders and to provide security for other people. Line between warriors and civilian during the war doesn't exist. 
We have experience from Bosnia and Herzegovina, unfortunately. We have experience from Syria these days. So who is saying uh, these people are civilians, not touch them? Losing that line between warriors, between, between people in uniform and civilians who are suffering and even they are suffering more than people in uniform during the war, they are exactly losing uh, field for questioning this issue. Why we have to think about this? Uh, what uh, are the reasons that we are saying pros? Uh, we are speaking here about human resource diversity. We are having different needs. We are having, uh, having different approaches to different or same problems that we have. So taking in consideration that human diversity is very important for us. More, we have international uh, and our national laws, rules, uh, uh, norms, and we have to respect them. We have a wonderful laws if we speak about gender issue, but how much we can speak about good implementation of that uh, laws and rules. We are speaking about laws that exactly settle the service in the armed forces or settle gender issue completely in, inside the society. We are speaking now about fourth generation of forces. Uh, you know, we have development in, in, in our armies and now these days, these years, we are speaking about fourth uh, generation of our force, uh, forces. New forces asking for human diversity to be involved in them. Why? Because we have our uh, operational request, we have our experience from the wars and missions that we have in the world, and we have something what we call career development, having women in uniform, having women in armed forces, we exactly have a generations of uh, uh, people who would like to develop their career a proper way. What are uh, advantages? We are speaking here about uh, equal opportunity. So very often I'm saying it's not necessary the time as a woman be somewhere just because I'm a woman. But it's very important not to stop me to be somewhere, to do something because I'm a woman. So equal opportunity. We have to prevent discrimination between uh, genders in every society and especially in armed forces. <coughs> And we have properly to address needs of men and women, not just during the wars or problems inside the society, then during normal daily life. Mm -hmm. We are speaking a lot of about gender-based violence. We are speaking about uh, zero tolerance. How somebody can guarantee that zero tolerance will be if only one gender are doing things to protect that. We would like to have our society that is family friendly, uh, family friendly for all of us. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have my experience from uh, my civil life as a student. I have my experience serving in armed forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina or previous GNA or between Federation Army in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So, uh, being inside the mission zone, what I have
have as my personal experience is a fact that man behavior becomes more suitable, more human, serving together in team site. It's not a secret story how many of people from UN exactly abuse their uniform, their blue ballot, and position that they have inside the mission. That situation becomes much more better when start to involve more and more women inside the mission. We would like to have stronger security sector. And I would like, if I had a problem as a woman, to speak with somebody who is my natural counterpart. Uh, I, uh, my friend uh, argue and say, why is it important that we have women in security sector? And I say, OK, forget security sector. Let's go to the. Uh, hospital. For example, if you have some sexual disease as a man, would, we, would you like to speak with a female doctor or male? Usual answer is, as I would like to speak with, with, with male doctor. <coughs> and I think I respect that, but you have to respect my need to speak with my counterpart. Just try to follow people who are visiting our uh, official institutions to solve some problems. Bureaucratic job or something like that. Usually follow <coughs> young people with immediately approach to young servicemen or ser service women. So it means it's something in human nature <coughs> that we are seeking for our natural counterpart, and we have to respect that. Kofi Annan said that if we start security sector reform and in a proper moment involve gender issue in that, we will exactly have a good governance. We will have responsible society. We will have society who has good uh, fundament to develop itself. Forgetting gender issue in this story, we are closing door to half of our population not to work, not to be economically strong, not to provide good future generation of young people ready to work and to continue that job. What are the challenges? Stereotypes, first of all. Changes of mindset. I'm very happy every time when I see men sitting together with us speaking about this issue. Why? Because my friends, still you are on decision-making position. So if you not support us from your position, this topic will stay as utopia. We need senior policy support. We need good network. We need to be on decision-making position. After 16 years of resolution, still speaking, how many of us are somewhere? It's nothing. How many of us start to taking positions inside our institutions. Very slow process. Uh, these days we have a parallel conference in Budva speaking about women politicians. It's a very bad fact that from year to year we have less and less women in politics. How or who will help us to settle this topic on proper position if we don't have enough women who understand each other. And what is wrong with us women 
who don't want to help each other. Network, very bad network. We are going from conference to conference, but network still is very weak. We are not able, we are not interested to help people who are staying behind us, our female colleagues, and help them to develop themselves. We have to learn from the men. <coughs> we have to speak about female leadership. Uh, to express us as a proper counterpart, we have to be on the same level with our men colleague. Not because we are women, then because we are very professional and we are able to do this. Uh, speaking about military, uh, these two days we will have a chance to speak about that. We will make uh, opportunity uh, to have a training that is proper one for uh, women.